to license it. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a Matchbox Lotus Europa number 5 from 1969. This must be a popular model because I see a lot of YouTube restorations going on. Mine's pretty worn out. It's actually a super fast model, but it's got opening doors, a clear windshield, metal base. Uh, the, the black paint looks like it was applied later by Junior, and it's coming right off, and you can see those wheels are shot. I usually try to save the wheels for authenticity, but today it's going to necessitate a full wheel swap. Into the bench vise and out come the two rivets that are holding this one together. They're both in the back and they're quite small, but uh, this one presented no problems for the drill or the bits. It's always kind of fun to pull the base off and see what lies inside, especially from 1969. I have found critters and rocks and nests, but this one's not too bad. You see how worn out those wheels are. And somebody's chewed off the end of the trailer hitch, and I'm not going to try to rebuild a hitch. I don't know why a Lotus would have a hitch on it, but I'll have to clip that just a bit shorter and straighter so it doesn't poke out the back. There's a tricky little uh, hinge assembly that holds these doors in place. And the windshield is the only thing that gave me a little bit of a delay. I had to bore out a little bit gently because it was riveted to the top of the car. And sadly, there's some black paint stains on there. We'll have to see how much difficulty that will present. And with a one millimeter drill bit, I go down just as far as that yellow tape line and then I proceed to tap out these holes and that will take a couple of M2 screws. And so far so good. All is well with our little Europa. Out come the wheels. I don't think I could save those. Maybe some of you guys with super ninja makeover skills could do that. But today I've decided, ah, mm, out they go. Now ah, that looks much nicer. And I'll tell you one thing that I've learned during these makeovers is put everything for one model in one dish big and small or you're going to brush that little hinge off the bench top and lose it. Now I've got a special uh, procedure here for the paint stripping gel. I dip the body in completely and immerse that. Set it aside in this little cup and I'll cover that up. But the base, uh, I've left the plastic suspension on this, so I don't want to fully dip it in. I'm going to carefully brush just the bottom side of the metal base, because that was also spray painted black. And I'm taking care not to drip over the edge, uh, because there's the suspension. It's plastic, and the, the stripping gel would just melt that, or at least damage it. 
but it'll be okay this way. Cover that up and set it aside while I take to the washing of the parts, and there's only two. I think I'll leave the interior cream. And we have to give a little special attention to the windshield today because of that paint. I don't know if that's 1969 or 2009, but it's on there pretty good. But a little thumb scratch indicates it'll come off, but not with a toothbrush and soapy water. I've got to hit it with the sandpaper. And that's part of the windshield restoration process anyway, so just a few extra minutes today on this one. And you can see it's coming off a little bit at a time. Thank you for visiting my channel today. If you're enjoying this Europa makeover, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber yet, I'd be real happy if you'd hit the subscription button on the bottom right corner of your screen and also the notification bell so you'll be uh, aware of all the new content that goes up. And during these days, it's been about one every other day. And that'll change when we get back to normal, but in Switzerland, I'm looking at seven more weeks of coronavirus lockdown. So, probably some more cars coming your way. A little bit of polish made the difference on that windshield, and we'll revisit the paint stripper box. See, look at that. Paint is hanging off there like loose zombie skin. Yuck, that's going to be no problem, especially the uh, the black paint on the surface, which was applied certainly later. And we'll get this down to bare metal with no problem at all. I did remember to paint strip the little doors too. So there they go. One or two swipes each and they're clean. And as you can see from here, the plastic suspension survived the paint stripping process. So I just need to flip that over and give a little brush to the bottom side. And when we get down to the bare metal, it's always interesting to see what kind of condition the model is in. This one has some 50 year oxidation on it, but uh, not too many pit marks or casting flaws. But I will need to give this just a little bit more time with the old wire brush. This is actually part of the makeover process that I enjoy the most because you're starting to bring new life back to that really old model that's lost its luster and maybe spent the last 10 years in a box somewhere. So they all get a new lease on life. And there it is, down to bare metal and after some wire brushing and steel wool. I think that's in pretty good shape. So we'll get this ready for paint with a little bit of degreasing. And this is a very special car today. Not because it's a Lotus Europa, uh, but because since I started this hobby merely five weeks ago, this is car number 25 that I have restored. That's about one every other day. And I only have 48 subscribers. I was hoping for 50 today. Maybe you'll be number 50. Hit that subscribe button. And it's my wedding anniversary as well. And it's the second day that the Swiss stores open, so it looks like we were robbing the building supply store. We didn't. I paid for some paint, spray paint, and tried to pick 
a special color for number 25 and which one do you think I favored? Because they come in every color under the rainbow. I am hitting this with some old, bright, glitter pink. What do you think? I don't know if you're watching this on your phone, you might not see it, but if you're on the computer screen or the TV, you can see this glitter blowing. <laughs> this is a this is a car that screams, do I have your attention now? Malibu Barbie would be happy to drive this car around. But hey, it's fun. And I finally got a selection of paints. They weren't airbrush paints at the building supply, just spray cans. But it gives me a little bit more variety. It gives you something different to look at than red or black or blue. And uh, because it's a special car, Special detail, Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeover, car number 25. Vanity license plate goes on the back just with a little bit of white glue, and I'll straighten that around with a toothpick. So if you find that in a box 50 years from now, you'll remember where it came from. And to take your eye away from the blinding glitter pink, I thought I'd do just a few little details like the headlights and the door latches and hood pins in chrome and there's a little bit of attention on the taillight. And you know these little doors come out much easier than they go back in, so Took a little bit of fiddling, but there they go. I like the matchbox car details, like the opening doors. And I did trim off the trailer hitch on the back, just so it doesn't show when there's a little hook in the front. Give it a squeeze and a click and two screws into the back. And I like those nice new wheels on this one. No way we could have put those originals there. They went into the bin. And here we go. Super sparkly, super bright, but cleaned up and actually it's growing on me. I like that. I wouldn't put that on very many models of cars, but it seems to fit this one all right. And the doors are still swinging the way they should. And that's our Matchbox Lotus Europa Superfast. Wow, that looked tired. That was the worst paint job I've seen yet. But we took care of that with the glitter pink. And there's the finished machine. Thanks for visiting today. Here's to 25 more cars. It's coffee time.